Hi everyone, this is a quick tutorial to show you how you can use an iPhone and a computer to create 3D scans and which tools you can use to prepare the obtained data for 3D printing. For this to work you will need an iPhone or an iPad which supports Face ID and a computer to run some open source tools. The technology behind Apple's True Depth camera which is used for Face ID is nothing else but an infrared camera in combination with an infrared dot projector and some software magic that can reconstruct a height map from the captured infrared image that shows the projected dots. In practice it looks like this. I used my Android phone which has an infrared front camera but no 3D capabilities and recorded myself while I used my iPhone in the other hand to do a 3D scan of myself. You can see the dots spread across my face but also behind me all over the wall. You can see the size of the dots vary but depending on how far they are from the phone. I guess the depth is somehow estimated by the size of the dots dots or the distance between them, which is captured by the iPhone's infrared camera as well. The 3D scan app I use for this is called Capture 3D Scan Anything. It starts with a depth preview shown in purple and the front camera as a background image for orientation. Once you start recording, you need to slowly move the camera around the object to gather as many 3D samples as possible. It's easy to do this with selfie scans, as you can see yourself most of the time while scanning. When scanning others or objects, this can become a bit tricky. Even if you can get used to scanning in blind mode, I decided to print an attachment so I can redirect the camera with a tiny mirror so I can track the scanning progress and get better results this way. Once you are done, you stop the recording or if you lose track of your object, it will stop automatically and show you the resulting point cloud. If you are happy with the result, you can hit save and add it to your scans. You can view your previously saved scans from the gallery. The next step is to export the point cloud to your computer. Once you tap the share button, it takes a while for the share menu to open, but once it's ready, you can use any service you like to transfer the files to your computer. If you use the app I presented, the file you will get is a USDZ file. Next, make sure to install Blender and the USDZ import export plugin by following their installation instructions. The links are below in the description. You can then import your 3D scan into your Blender workspace. At this point, it's practical to edit the point cloud and remove parts that are either errors or things you don't want in your final model. Once you're done with this step, export the object as an OBJ file and open it in MeshLab. Import the object and wait for it to appear in the workspace. From the Filters menu, go into the submenu Remeshing, Simplification and Reconstruction and then on Surface Reconstruction screen Poisson. Leave the values in the configuration dialog untouched and click on apply. Then close the config dialog. You can hide the point cloud and inspect your mesh and select it for export. Export it as an object file again and import it into Blender. Here you can further modify the mesh, for example, to model it into a 3D printable block and print it. The easiest way of closing this open mesh is by going into edit mode, then select the corner furthest to the back and connect it to its matching corner along all other vertices in between. Create a new face and extrude the long edge down to the other side of the object. Repeat this procedure with the bottom edge and the extruded edge and create a face between them and close the remaining holes on the sides. You can extrude the back panel to create a bigger block which makes it easier to print. Export the resulting object as an STL file and slice it to create your G-code. With this approach you have the highest control over the created objects. I agree it's not a perfect solution to not create the final object directly on your phone but my experience is editing the raw data first and having very powerful tools such as Blender and MeshLab provides the best possible outcomes even if they're not the fastest results. I hope you could learn something from me and I'm keeping my fingers crossed while uploading this video that I could convince you to subscribe and see me next time. Until then, have fun.